Tonight, we're uh, going to continue the teachings, and we're going to go through the teachings of the Holy Spirit. This is the reason we go through these things, that we keep active within these things. Tonight, we're going to continue the teaching, and we're going to look at the conviction of sin. Now, this teaching that we're going through, it's known as the teaching of pneumatology. What that means, I know it's a big word, and I'm not fancy for big words, but whenever you see that way, it means the theology and the teachings of the Holy Spirit. That's what that means, and that's what we've been looking into. Tonight, we're going to look at something very simple. I'm only a simple person. I'm going to try and keep this as simple as I can. We're going to look tonight of how the Holy Spirit convicts me and you. How the Spirit convicts us. So let's turn to the Word of God. That's the best place for us to start tonight. Turn to John's Gospel, chapter 16, and verse 8. John, chapter 16, and verse 8. We'll read the Word of God and then we'll pray. Give me an amen when you've got it. Everyone got it? The word of God says this. It says, When he comes, he will prove the world to be in the wrong about sin, righteousness and judgment. Because people did not believe in me. About righteousness, because I am going to the Father, where you can see me no longer. And about judgment, because the prince of this world now stands condemned. I have much more to say to you, more than you can now hear. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truths. He will not speak on his own. He will only speak of what he is, and he will tell you of what yet is to come. Let's bow our heads and let's pray. Father, Lord God, I come before you tonight, my God. Father, Lord God, tonight, Lord, I'm just a man, my God. Lord, I need you, my God. Lord, I need the power, Lord, of your spirit to move tonight, my God. It's you, Lord, that speaks into people's lives tonight, my God. It's you that changes lives, Lord. Lord, I ask tonight, Lord, by the power of your spirit, my God, that you would minister into people's lives, Lord. You would, you would speak to us tonight through your word, my God. Lord, that we know, Lord, it's through the power, Lord, of your spirit tonight, my God, that you move, my God, this night, my God. Lord, let it be nothing of me, my God. But Lord, let your name be glorified tonight, Lord. And Lord, I ask tonight, Lord, that you would give me the strength and the words, my God. And you would lead and guide me tonight, Lord, as I share your word. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So the Bible says here, that when the Comforter comes, the Parasolite, the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, the Bible says that he will convict the world of all sin. That when the Holy Spirit comes, he will convict the world of all sin. And something that we need to understand tonight, that no one, no one is ever truly saved without experiencing the conviction of sin. Hear what Jesus speaks about. No one is ever, ever saved unless the Holy Spirit convicts them. And a person who claims to be a believer, to be a Christian. And they can just go out into this world and they can sin. And they can go out every day and they don't blink an eyelid to it. And they don't get convicted. Then I say this with all respect tonight. That then people are not saved. Because a true spirit filled person will get convicted. Great men and great women when we read throughout the word of God. They come under conviction. Great men and great women of God. We go and we look at Adam in the very first beginning. In the book of Genesis. We see when Adam sinned. When he fell in the garden. The Bible says that he run and he hid. He was convicted. He run and he hid. We see Isaiah in the book of Isaiah. When Isaiah come into the presence of God. When he, when, when he come into the very presence of God he said... I'm a, I'm a sinful man. I'm a man of unclean lips. We see the thief on the cross. When the two thieves are on the cross. And one's airing insults at him. One's mocking him. And one of the thieves turns around and he says. 
We are getting what we rightfully deserve. But this man is innocent. And he looked at Jesus and he said, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Remember me, Lord. He was convicted. In Acts chapter 2, the Bible says the people was cut to the heart. And 3,000 were saved. King David, when he committed the sin of adultery and murder, he said, Lord, I have sinned and sinned against you. King David realised. Peter, when Jesus approached him, he said, Lord, away from me. I am a sinful man. And we see the prodigal son. When the prodigal son left the father and he said, I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Father, he said, I've sinned against heaven and sinned against the father. And when you look throughout the word of God and even till today, it's through the conviction of sin by the Holy Spirit that leads men and women to repentance. And not only does it lead us to repentance, but the Bible says that the Holy Spirit leads us and guides us into all truth. Amen. You see, me tonight, a man, I can't convince someone of sin. No man can. It's way beyond our ability. It's only God that convicts people of sin. It's only by the power of the Holy Spirit that people are convicted. You see, through the preaching of the gospel, when the gospel is preached, and through the Holy Spirit, it convicts men and women of their sin, which then leads a man and woman to repentance. We see Joseph. Joseph in, in, in uh, Genesis, um, when Potiphar's wife comes to him, the Bible says that he flees, he runs. Why? Because he knew it was wrong. He was convicted. He knew that it was wrong, so he run. And you know, so many times we can ask the question tonight, when we're in a position and God is telling us that it's wrong and we know it's wrong, do we flee from it? Do I flee from things when I know it's wrong? It's a question to ask ourselves tonight. Because before, before we was born again, before we was born again, before we was Christians, let's be truthful tonight. It didn't bother you to tell lies, did it? It wasn't a problem to tell lies. It wasn't a problem to go and rip somebody off. It wasn't a problem to go to all the worldly places. It didn't bother us. We didn't blink an eyelid to it. It was of no interest. But the minute that we become born again, the minute that we ask the Lord into our lives, the Lord began to do something in our life. He begins to convict us. He begins to show us the wrong. He begins to show us, you know, as we're filled with the Holy Spirit, he shows us the sinful, the wicked, the things that are wrong, doesn't he? He is with me tonight. He shows us the things that are wrong. He highlights the areas in our life where they're wrong. The things that we once did and didn't even blink an eyelid to, we now know that they're wrong because of the Holy Spirit within us. Convicting us, telling us of the things that we do is wrong. God begins to expose sin within our life. And he also guides us and leads us away from them things. You see, when the day of Pentecost, and we read in the Bible, and the, and the day of Pentecost in Acts, something special took place on that day, didn't it? Something really special took place. What we see is God the Father poured out his Holy Spirit upon men and women's lives. In Joel, the prophet Joel, Joel prophesied it would happen. Acts towards the fulfilment of it. That God would pour out his spirit upon men and women's lives. And men and women would begin to be convicted of their sin. And it would lead men and women to repentance. And through the preaching, through the preaching of the gospel. The same way me and you was convicted of our sin and we was brought to repentance wasn't we when we heard the gospel you know we was convicted and we was brought to repentance we realized for the first time how guilty we was that we were sinners that we was under the wrath of god that we had broken god's law why because the holy spirit showed it showed us convicted us it prosecuted us to be in the wrong proved us to be in the wrong that we were guilty and it led us to repentance. It led us to turn to God. And now the blood of Jesus washes us clean. It's washed us innocent. Amen. 
And whenever the word of God is preached, whenever the word of God is preached, when the gospel is preached, God will work in men and women's lives by the power of his Holy Spirit. God will begin to do something. That word conviction, that word conviction, you can look it up. It means to declare someone guilty of an offence. So it, it, it means to convince or to prove or to determine someone is guilty. That's exactly when the Holy Spirit come into this world, that is exactly what it does. It proved men and women to be guilty. Guilty of sin. And the conviction of the Holy Spirit, it's not the work of a man. And we're all aware of that. But God uses men. We are instruments useful for, for building God's kingdom. But we know that it's not men that saves anyone. We know it's the work of God and it's the power of the Holy Spirit. One plants, one waters, and God makes it grow. The book of Ephesians tells us that we've been saved by grace through faith and it's not a work of our own. No man can ever boast. It's all the work of God. But when God convicts us, and he convicts us by the power of his Holy Spirit, for the first time, the very first time, we see ourselves for who we really are. We see ourselves, you know. For the first time, God shows us and opens our eyes to ourselves, really. You know, I didn't realise that I was a sinful person. I didn't realise my sin separated from, me, from God. I didn't realise the things I'd done was bad until God showed me. Until God showed me the person that I really was. And it is only by the gospel message and the work of the Holy Spirit that reveals that we are sinners and that we are separated from God. That's why when the Holy Spirit comes, the Bible says he proves the world to be wrong about what? Sin, righteousness and judgment. Because the people didn't believe in him. It says the Holy Spirit will convict the world of sin. Will show the world that they're sinful, they're guilty, that they've broken God's law. The righteousness, the holiness of God. God's righteousness. Judgment. And the Bible says the Holy Spirit will lead believers into all truth. First God convicts them of sin. And then God will show the sinner the righteousness of God. And that righteousness which is provided by God and offered to the man in the person of Christ Jesus. You know unless God enlightens a man and woman by convicting them of their sin. Unless God does this no man or no woman. They ever truly understand this, how unrighteous they are, and how unholy they are, and how sinful they are, unless God enlightens them, unless God shows them. And when God shows us that, 2 Timothy says that God, through the Holy Spirit, grants us repentance to call upon the name of the Lord. You know, the Holy Spirit shows us how righteous he is, and how unrighteous we are. The Bible says we are like filthy rags, amen. But the world, it said here, the world would be proved wrong. The world would be proved wrong about who Jesus was. You know, when Jesus returned and he went to the Father, he would prove them wrong. Because the Jews just looked at Jesus as being a sinful man, didn't they? They just looked at him as being a sinful man, but they were wrong. The one that they claimed was just a, a, a sinful man and he was just a man was the one who God raised. Was the one who God exalted to, the, to his right hand side. And when the Holy Spirit comes. It will convict the world of its false standard of righteousness. That's what the Holy Spirit will do. And what we need to understand tonight. That there is only one righteous standard. And there is only one righteousness. And his name is Jesus Christ. His name is Jesus. It's only his righteousness. It goes a few verses down. It says that. The prince of this world now stands condemned. See, when Jesus was on the cross, the very one who was judged was Satan. Satan was the one who was judged. Jesus defeated him. You know, he, he condemned him to hell. He overcome sin. He overcome death. And it is through the righteousness of God that me and you have the victory today. Through the cross, through the resurrection, through the good news of the gospel being preached, which brings salvation... Is that me and you are here today because of that. Because of that. 
Because of the work that Jesus has done. Because of what he's done on the cross. Because he has convicted and showed us that we are sinners. That we are here today. Amen. And the Bible says. That the devil has no hold on Jesus. He has no hold on me and you. That we have been set free. Glory to God. The Bible says who the son sets free. Is free indeed. But we was once people. Who was without hope. We was under judgment. We was guilty of sin. We broke the law of God. But through the cross we have forgiveness. Through the cross we have forgiveness for them. And you know. God has poured his grace and his mercy and his love into our lives. And God has put one of the greatest things that we can ever have. The spirit of God within our lives. The greatest thing that God has given us. Is Holy Spirit to lead us and to guide us. And you know I thank God tonight. I thank God for the Holy Spirit. I thank God through the power of the Holy Spirit, that he convicted me and showed me that I was a sinner and that I needed Jesus. I thank God for that. But not only does the Holy Spirit convict us, and I know that's what we're looking at tonight, but the Bible said, and Jesus said, that it would guide us into all truth. This is what the Holy Spirit will do. Guide means leadership, that he will lead you, that he will guide you, that the Holy Spirit knows what is best for me and you, knows the wrong, that we shouldn't do. But something we need to understand tonight. I don't want to go off, off track of what we're looking at. But there is a difference tonight that we need to understand. Conviction of sin and condemnation. We need to understand that so many Christians I speak to. You know they allow the enemy to condemn them. They know they've done wrong. But they give the enemy a foothold and they allow condemnation. We need to understand that conviction is from God. Conviction. When you are convicted and you do something wrong and I'm convicted, it is of God. But condemnation is from Satan. It's not of God. You know, conviction should always lead us when we fall or when we do something wrong. It should always lead us to run to God and to repent and turn to God. But condemnation will cause us to do the opposite. It will lead us to run away from God. Making us feel like we're useless. We're finished. We can't be a Christian. That's it now. We've gone too far. We've sinned and there's no coming back. That's condemnation. And if you're a person tonight in here and you, we all fail God. And if you fail God and you think that's you tonight, I'm finished. I can't go on. I tell you, you can go on tonight. You can go on through Jesus. Because he has made it possible for us to go on. But don't let condemnation tell you that you're not good enough. Listen, conviction will always lead you to turn to God. Condemnation, you turn away from God. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8 that those who are in Christ, therefore those who are in Christ, no longer under condemnation. Remember that tonight. There's no longer any condemnation for those in Christ. But we know that that doesn't stop the enemy from trying to put them little seeds in our mind. And trying to condemn us. But we need to know the difference tonight. Conviction, when we do something wrong, should always lead us to God. Lord, I'm sorry. Repent and turn to God. Yeah. If you're getting the voice in your head telling you, you're not good enough. Don't go to church. Don't pray. Don't read your word. That's from Satan. It's not from God. God will always lead us to him. I can remember once doing a job. And I wasn't long saved. And I was doing this job, and I went on saved, and like everybody else, I needed to get on in life. And I can remember this man saying to me, he said, just go up there, and whatever needs doing, do. Now, before I was a Christian, I would have went up there and got as much as I could and done as much probably as I possibly could. But as I was going up the ladder, I'll never forget this, it struck me, and I've shared it with people in here. I was going up the ladder, and on this side, God was saying, it's wrong. The Holy Spirit was convicting me. It's wrong. You shouldn't do this. You're a Christian. You're a child of God. This is wrong. But on the other side, the enemy is telling me, go for it. Get as much as you can. But I could feel the Holy Spirit convicting me, telling me it was wrong. And that's how we know the difference when the Holy, with the Holy Spirit convicting us. We know when we do wrong. And I thank God that 
God did convict me that day. Because I come down and I, and I, I never did anything. I left the job. I did what I did. And I went away. I never give in to it. Why? Because the Holy Spirit convicted me. I knew it was wrong. I knew that it would have been wrong to, to take that man's money and not do it. Whereas before, I wouldn't have blinked an eye in I'd have, I'd, I'd have just done it. But that's the difference when we're filled with the Holy Spirit. God reminds us. God, he, he, he tells us when we're doing wrong, doesn't he? And we've been in, I'm very sure, in all of us in here tonight, we have been in situations and we have been in times when we know it's wrong. We know it's wrong. We know the certain thing we're doing is wrong. And the Holy Spirit comes and it convicts us. But what do we do when the Holy Spirit convicts us? Do we flee from it? Or do we give in to it? But that's what the Holy Spirit does. It reminds us of the sin, of the wrong. You know, the disciples, they was reminded of everything when the Holy Spirit come, of what Jesus said, what Jesus taught them, the things that he told them to do and not to do. And you know, the Holy Spirit works the very same way with me and you. The Holy Spirit leads us what is right and what is wrong. And as I've said, the greatest, the greatest gift that anyone could have the greatest power that anyone can have is the Holy Spirit and it dwells within us. We need to understand tonight the power of the Holy Spirit and what it can do in our lives. You know, Paul said in uh, the book of Ephesians, when he was speaking to the Ephesian people, he said, the power that raised Jesus from the dead is the same power that lives in me and you. The very same power that raised Jesus on the third day is the same power that lives within us. And the Holy Spirit's job is to teach me and you, is to guide us, is to lead us, is to correct us. At times the Holy Spirit will rebuke us, the Holy Spirit will convict us, show us all the wickedness and all the sin around us. It will reveal to us what's wrong, it warns us of the things that's wrong. And I read something down here and it says conviction should stop us sinning. Or sinning will stop us being convicted. If the Holy Spirit convicts you and we know that it's wrong, we need to turn away from it. Let me tell you, when we have hatred within our heart, if I have hatred towards someone, right, and I'm saying not nice things about someone, the Holy Spirit will convict us, won't it? It will convict us of these things. You know, if I've got unforgiveness against people and I've heard testimonies of people share, how God has convicted them and how God has laid it on their heart to go to that person and say sorry. Because the Holy Spirit's convicted them. It reminds them that unforgiveness is not a thing of God. Jealousy, slander, gossip, pride, anger, worldly talk. Have you ever been in a conversation, and I'll hold my hands up, I've been there, right? Have you ever been in a conversation with someone, right? And when you've walked away, you thought, I wish I never had that conversation. You felt that guilty. You felt that convicted. You walked away and you thought, I wish that I never had that conversation. I feel so guilty. You know, it's conviction. God tells us, don't do that again. It's wrong. Don't talk that talk again. It's wrong. The Holy Spirit shows us the things that are wrong and the things that are sinful. And if God says it's wrong, it's wrong, isn't it? It's wrong. That's why it's important that we face and that we experience the conviction of sin. Very, very important. First, when we experience it, it leads us to repentance and to God. And then, when we face, when we're saved, we face the conviction. When we know what is wrong. But that's why it's important tonight that we face and that we understand the conviction of sin. When we do wrong and God reveals it to us, would you agree with me? It's good to have conviction. I think it is. It's good. It's times when I, I probably look at something or say something or do something and I get convicted and I think, thank you, Lord, for reminding me that that is wrong. Thank you, Lord, that you are guiding me on the right path, that you are leading me into all truth. That if I want to go that way and the Lord is saying to me, it's wrong, I have to go that way. It guides us into all truth. And you know, that's how we know tonight that we are saved. 
That's how we know that we are born again of the Spirit of God and that the Holy Spirit lives within us. Because the Holy Spirit will convict a true believer. The Holy Spirit will point out the wrongs and the things that we shouldn't do. And that's why it's important that we face it. It's important that the Spirit of God shows us the wrong things in life. Things that we shouldn't do. That through that God moulds us and shapes us and changes us and makes us into the men and women of God that he wants to make us into. When we sin, when we fail God and the Holy Spirit convicts us, we have to repent, don't we? We have to repent and we have to turn away and we're not to do it again. Repentance means do a U-turn in our lives. We have to completely turn away from it. But you know tonight we need to understand something. There is a great danger tonight when we keep committing the same sin over and over and over again. There is a great danger in that tonight. When we keep committing the very same thing over and over and over again. Paul said in Romans, shall we go on sinning that grace may abound? He said, by no means. And I know in here tonight, we all fail God, don't we? We all let God down. But you know, areas in our life where we find we keep failing and we keep sinning and we keep giving in to it. I tell you what happens. You know when you keep failing in one area, it becomes easier and easier and easier to commit that sin. It becomes easier. And you know to go and pray becomes harder and harder and harder. God don't want us to struggle in the same area. The Holy Spirit doesn't want us to keep struggling in the same area. And tonight, if there's an area in your life where you have been battling and you have been struggling with for a long time, then we have to repent and we have to give it to God. And we have to turn to God. And we, we have to turn away and, and not to do it again. And we have to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. And let the Holy Spirit lead you and guide you. And listen to the voice of God. We're not to let our hearts tonight go cold and go hard because of unrepented sin. Where we can't hear the voice of God. There was a man in the Bible, I'm going to finish very shortly. There was a man in the Bible called King David. And King David said this. He said, if I had not confessed the sin in my heart, the Lord would have not, not listened or heard my prayer. That's what he said. You know, and sometimes... I've been there myself. Sometimes I can't hear the voice of God. And the reason why we can't hear the very voice of God is because we're not confessing our sin to God. The areas that we're struggling. But the Bible says this. But if we confess in 1 John, one of my favourite scriptures, I'm just going to read it. 1 John, you can turn to it if you want. Verse 8 and 9. And I would... Um, Recommend that you highlight this verse because this is a verse that has so many times spoke to me. It says, if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we confess, the Bible says that he is faithful and he will forgive us. You know, that word there when you look at it, purify, right? It's like me putting a big water tank here now. And... Every day that water tank collects dirt and it collects rubbish. But there's a filter in the bottom of that tank. And what the filter does, it sucks the dirt out of the water and it keeps the tank clean. <coughs> Let me tell you today, on a daily basis, each and every one of us are like that water tank. Throughout the day, we get contaminated. Something comes into our life, but we need to go to Jesus. Like, like the filter will clean the water out. Let me tell you, Jesus does the very same with us. He washes us and he purifies us. Amen. I'm going to finish tonight. But tonight, maybe there's things within your life. Maybe there's an area that you're struggling with. Maybe God is convicting you in an area. And maybe tonight is the night that you let it go. Maybe tonight, something that you've been battling with for a long time. And it's been eating away at you then tonight the Holy Spirit wants to take it away. God wants you to call upon his name tonight. You know, we're going to worship the Lord tonight.